Hello everyone and welcome back to another reaction video and vocal analysis. Uh, I'm Samatis, I'm an Italian singer uh, specialized in versatile vocals. I sing for video games, trailer music and I'm also an independent musician doing my own songwriting and production music. Uh, I sing in many different styles and genres and uh, this has brought me to develop an interest in uh, listening to other versatile vocalists. Uh, such as uh, Dimash, which is uh, the main singer that I've been uh, analyzing and reacting to throughout this series so far. This new video is uh, part of a mini-series within the series uh, where we are looking at different performances of the same song, which is the Diva Dance song, uh, a very beautiful and very difficult song from the Fifth Element movie. Uh, you can go look back at previous uh, reaction videos from my series, they will be here here in the description box somewhere around here uh, and uh, look at the previous performances uh where I talk more in that about the general uh, style of the song, where it comes from, etc, etc. This performance that I'm looking at today uh, is, if I'm not mistaken, from 2020. The diva dance performance that I'll be looking at today is actually a duet uh, between uh, Dimash and another singer called uh, Lee uh, Yu Gang. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong on any kind of pronunciation stuff, of course. I'm not sure if there are other Diva Dance duets out there. This might be a very unique thing we're seeing here. It's from uh, 2020, so uh, it's a bit later than the other Diva Dance uh, live performances we've seen in previous videos. They're also performing the uh, Drunken Beauty, uh, or I've seen different titles. You can once again let me know in the comments more information about this. Uh, but anyways, they are performing this other song uh, in uh, I'm guessing uh, Chinese uh, at this point. This time we can also take a look at their, uh, another aspect of uh, singing because there will be some uh, classical uh, Chinese singing in a way. I will not uh, go into depth too much because it's not uh, my specific uh, area of expertise, but uh, we can see some differences in uh, vocal uh, style between the two when they're singing together, uh, even though both both are considered classical styles. In my own country, uh, in European culture, when we say classical, everyone thinks about uh, opera and classical music, uh, but uh, we have to really think that classical music uh, is uh, a very wide term that has a different meaning for different cultures. So if we uh, talk about classical music in India, it will have a different meaning if we talk about classical music and classical singing in China or in East Asia, it will have uh, another different meaning and a completely different technique, you know. So uh, this is a great example where we can see how classical can mean an entirely different vocal setup uh, right side by side. <laughs>
I had uh, I had to stop somewhere because otherwise uh, I'm, I'm gonna listen to the entire thing and it's uh, um, too overwhelming. <laughs> I need to take a breath uh, just for a minute. Whew, uh, that was amazing. I love the uh, atmosphere, the stage. Uh, as uh, usual, this is something that I always encourage you to look at, the instrumentation. Uh, you can hear uh, the traditional instruments there. The first one, uh, the um, Drunken Beauty song, uh, is definitely uh, more in kind of a... Um, uh, also from what I briefly read uh, about it, um, uh, a love song between uh, two lovers that cannot exactly be together for various, um, uh, let's say, plot reasons. Uh, and uh, you can see this a lot, uh, even if you don't understand the lyrics in the interpretation of the singers, uh, everything is very soft. Uh, they're uh, also sitting down there on these thrones uh, which uh, I'm guessing uh, uh, also um, help identify the characters they're kind of interpreting I might be wrong but this is my guess um, in in the first song uh, and uh, immediately you can hear the difference even in the drunken beauty song where they're kind of uh, you know um, doing the uh, a similar style they're not exactly going already into very different directions but you can already uh, hear first of all of course it's different uh, timbers so the unique voice of each uh, vocalist is different by and in itself uh, but also the way they use it uh, even just to sing the ballad style let's say uh, is different um, in the type of softness they use is different and this is uh, absolutely great. Um, it tells us that uh, even to achieve the same effect, there are uh, many different ways that we can go uh, around it. I love that Dimash does this kind of vocal fry slash growl effect. I think it's around here. Let me, let me hear, you. try to... <laughs> Uh, let's say it's not exactly, it's kind of growlish, uh, you can hear it also when I do it. Um, it's uh, similar in a way if you would try to do it, but uh, please be very careful, just as an example, I'm not saying that you should sing in this style. I, I just said syllables, I'm not trying to uh, do the w lyrics he says. Uh, it's similar to what you would do when you're trying to um, clear your throat when you might feel something you know that is kind of bothering you here <coughs> and then develop it from there with a lot of breath support and uh, a lot of technique around it to be uh, uh, safe uh, in its own execution and it's great uh, to kind of uh, drop this kind of uh, beautiful sounds here and there uh, for the transition. I love the uh, way they uh, split up the sections so they could both uh, showcase uh, their own uh, voices uh, and you can immediately, you could see it uh, also while I was listening, I was trying to always with my uh, face uh, show you the different vocal setup, uh, more easily used to it uh, Dimash uh, doing the opposite operatic vocals uh, from his previous uh, Diva Dance songs and uh, it's more or less similar to what he's done so far, you know, as at the beginning, at the beginning, uh, so very round, very uh, class um, western, very let's say European classical, um, very round, the soft palate is lifted, the mouth is round and everything in the air, as I would say, is going right this way. Uh, and I've done that kind of O closed O mouth shape. Uh, when um, uh, Li Yu Gong uh, is uh, 
singing, uh, even though the notes are more or less exactly the same, a way to uh, differentiate it can be using variations, so changing a few notes here and there, uh, so we can see that, for example, also here Dimash at one point goes way lower to take advantage of uh, his uh, um, very low range at the bottom of his, of his voice, and uh, Li Yugong uh, also does uh, some different notes in the staccato part, so where all the notes are like little dots uh, all uh, quickly, one right after the other. Uh, Li Yugong instead um, uh, tries to achieve uh, what uh, this uh, type of vocal style was meant for, which is projection, uh, which is um, getting your sound as far as possible. We have to think that originally both these vocal styles were meant uh, to be um, heard by an audience uh, in a theater uh, or at least in a very big space with no uh, amplification, uh, with no microphones, uh, but uh, in a different way. Uh, instead of using uh, the uh, round resonance, um, the Chinese uh, classical technique uses a lot of, uh, I don't like saying nasal resonance, uh, but uh, let's call it, uh, because sometimes this is seen as kind of a negative thing, but uh, let's call it as a top resonance. You can hear that um, the voice is all uh, always uh, being projected here, and this uh, achieves the effect of uh, basically sending the frequencies um, like an arrow in a very specific spot that cuts through everything else and uh, reaches very far. Uh, this is uh, in different ways used uh, across uh, very different cultures. Uh, also in modern music we can see vocal styles with a nasal approach such as uh, even uh, rock and heavy metal music, you know, uh, falsetto of uh, rock singers and metal singers also use is this of this kind of uh, nasal uh, position in the in the mask which is this part here where uh, the sound uh, resonates <laughs> let's see if I sing it normally if I tried to imitate a Liu Gang Of course, it's not exactly the same, but just to show you very, um, uh, in a very exaggerated way, the difference. Uh, in the first uh, example that I did, I was uh, going very round, soft palate lifted, etc. In the second example that I did, uh, trying to do um, the same type of vocal uh, uh, of Li Yugang, uh, I basically uh, tried to. Uh, among the other things, breathing, support, etc., I tried to uh, place my sound exactly here uh, at the front of my face, right below the nose, and here where my front teeth are. And you can um, Notice that even if you're not pushing uh, a lot of sound, a lot of air out, the resonance is uh, so uh, bright and brilliant that, as I was saying, uh, the sound can be carried very far away. So you can achieve, uh, n let's say, not a lot of volume, but a lot of, as I was saying, projection, uh, a lot of um, distance uh, with your sound without doing uh, a lot of uh, work, which is what we need when we have to perform, uh, you know, long works. Another beautiful thing uh, that I cannot uh, ignore here, uh, even though I always say that it's not all about the high notes, uh, is that uh, there is uh, this... Uh this thing here, 
uh, which is um, I don't know uh, it's like uh, an alarm uh, sounding off <laughs> uh, because Dimash is so good so the alarm is sounding off to tell us you know Dimash is too good <laughs> um, I've been told that this might be a D8. You people can tell me in the comments the exact note, but yeah, this is... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's... Uh, I'd have to listen without the microphone to be more sure because uh, maybe this is also like pre-recorded, so I have no, I, no way to tell you exactly, but usually the most sure way uh, to say what kind of uh, vocal register, vocal technique is being used is to listen uh, with a room recording, no amplification, even if it's live. Uh, but uh, it could either be a very, you know, extreme whistle note or also uh, something that uh, um, is not exactly the best way to sing, but uh, uh, sometimes it can be used, which is inhale singing, so I'm like... <laughs> In any way, whether it's a whistle or inhale note, uh, it's beautiful, I'm not... Uh, this is just me guessing, it's not saying that one is better than the other. We have this um, ending part where uh, Dimash is doing the... Uh, main melody and Li Yu Gong is actually doing um, traditional Chinese uh, singing as a counterpart uh, and uh, I think it's a very very beautiful idea I think this is probably my favorite thing when you know two different um, singing techniques come together like this it's the most fun and interesting and enriching things to have uh, definitely this was the highlight of the performance for me and here we go let's just listen from here the dancers come in Okay, this last part, uh, I will go over it very briefly, but it was, uh, once again, very beautiful. Uh, I have to say, um, I've been very quiet because I was uh, listening very carefully. Uh, once again, uh, probably another highlight, uh, even more than the Diva Dance. Uh, not necessarily that it's more beautiful, it's more interesting uh, to me as someone who is very interested in uh, blending different uh, vocal styles and uh, different types of traditional singing. Um, it's uh, just like, uh, you know, when uh, operatic singing is uh, blended from opera into let's say pop we call it crossover this is like the crossover of crossover of crossover so uh, very very beautiful uh, very emotional and uh, beautiful balance between the two voices uh, even though they are so very different in sound and in uh, the techniques they use they blend so well together uh, and they blend well uh, with the music uh, I would love to see so much more of these uh, type of performances uh, all around this type of singing sometimes it's uh, made fun of sometimes you know but listen carefully here uh, and before in the diva dance the type of uh, high range that it allows you to reach and the type of uh, finesse in the um 
dynamics. Uh, we've seen it do the uh, staccato, so the um, dotted, uh, the t -t 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 notes, and now uh, we see it do this uh, flowy, flowing notes. Uh, uh, it takes a lot of control uh, to uh, stay in the same spot uh, right here, uh, project your voice uh, right here. Uh, all throughout and still uh, achieve different types uh, of dynamics uh, so going in a more flowing way and then I'm doing this uh, with the normal noise and now with this kind of more nasal voice of course it's not the same because I don't have that type of specific training but I try to make you feel a similar way. At the same time we have Dimash on the other side doing this very beautiful thing singing in a kind of tenor voice uh, and within the tenor voice uh, using uh, some kind of uh, we could call it um, Eastern European uh, and even Arabic in some ways uh, vocalizes and it's just um, uh, lifting uh, each other's part uh, with each other's uniqueness and then uh, they go all together towards the ending and Dimash uh, turns uh, seamlessly uh, his voice from this kind of tenor slash folk uh, voice uh, all the way into the operatic voice into the high note and that uh, of course takes uh, a lot of control um, the advantage is that that he is doing it all in head voice so all he has to do is change uh, resonances that he is using we can see that he is mainly using this kind of oh, and then kind of uh, raising the soft palate oh, and um, as the notes get higher um, the same kind of setup of course adapts to the higher note oh, oh, and uh, so on so on and then there is a little bit also of uh, mixed voice belting there so uh, since it's a uh, mixed voice he's uh, still partly in head voice and all he's just adding a little bit of chest uh, resonance uh, to make it sound uh, more powerful uh, so mm, I remember the exact note uh, let me listen back right one second. Uh, you can see that I didn't change anything, I'm still in the same roundness, uh, I'm just um, taking advantage of um, a different type of brightness uh, and then that brightness is letting my voice sound kind of like it it's more powerful and more chesty but it's not chest voice exactly I definitely hope that uh, listening to this can spark uh, uh, more people's interest in different types uh, of vocal styles uh, and as I was saying before um, also in different types um, of uh, let's say classical traditions uh, let's not just uh, think about you know uh, classical being uh, European or Western or uh, um, let's uh, think about many different classical traditions uh, that have their own uniqueness uh, and let's not make it a, a competition to figure out which one is the best we've seen here that uh, they can work so well together i think this is the best message that we can take from here we can uh, find some you know cultural aspects that are interesting like this one uh, it's an added value uh, and i'm uh, happy to bring that into my videos. So let me know if you find other videos um, from Dimash or other singers that kind of uh, do um, similar performances, duets like this, blend styles like this. You can also find me on social media if you want to get in touch uh, or stay updated. Uh, you can find me on Patreon and other similar uh, spaces to support me or just listen to my music. Uh, it would be very helpful. Uh, yeah, see you next time uh, for another reaction video and focal analysis. Bye bye bye.